This video is sponsored by Wildlife Command Center Coffee. More about them at the end of the video. Hey everybody, it's me, John Ward, and welcome back to another Dark Park Film Reviews. And uh, today we are going to be looking at a mess of Dollar Tree videos uh, that I purchased a few days ago. Uh, it is October, and uh, the Dollar Tree that I went to just had a mess of sci-fi films, horror films, and, and a few others in there. Um, I did go to a second one, which had nothing. Um, maybe they hadn't gotten their shipment in yet, but um, I do have a, let me, let's count this just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 DVDs. Um, that I purchased. Uh, so this is going to have to be divided into two videos. So Monday will be uh, basically the uh, Dollar Tree video number three, but part one. And then Friday will be Dollar Tree video four, part two. Because uh, there's just too many to go through here. And um, right in the middle of that, on Wednesday, will be uh, the newest one filmmaker, one film. Uh, that will be um, with Miranda Dudley and, uh, you know, special effects, uh, makeup effects extraordinaire. And um, that's going to be a good one. That's, it's actually a little longer than, than most of the one filmmakers. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a good one. And uh, so definitely check that out. But uh, yeah, let's, let's get to these, these DVDs here. So um, some of these I've heard of, some I haven't, a couple I've seen, a couple I haven't, um, some I'm really happy about. Um, I did pick up an extra copy of a film I already own uh, because I really love this film. I like the director a lot. Um, when we come to it, I'll mention it to you. Um, I can't tell if it's in this stack or the other stack for Friday, uh, but um, he will be a... Uh, a a guest on uh, one filmmaker, one film coming up, which I'm really excited about. So the first one, let's start with the first one here, which is Gremlin. Not to be confused with Gremlins, because I guess their budget only allowed them to have one Gremlin. So Gremlin. Uh, this is a film I've heard of, but I've never seen it. Um, it's got a good cover on it. I like that. And um, it's, let's see, you... You can't kill it. You can't escape it. You can only give it to someone you love. I like that. Um, and then it says, uh, an absolute winner, dot, dot, dot. You've definitely never seen anything like it before. And that's from Ain't It Cool News. I don't know if they have a lot of, you know, pull these days on things. They... They were something back in the day, but uh, I, I don't know if their reviews really mean much anymore, but eh, that's okay. Um, here's the side of it. And let's see on the back, it says, uh, the clock is ticking, dot, dot, dot. Uh, monster fans are going to dig it from Horror Society. Amazing. Uh, Gremlin lives up to the hype from DK Magazine. Um, it's bonus features are deleted scenes, audio commentary, behind the scenes featurette. Ooh, I like that. So that, that's, that's three good things. Um, let's see. It is 88 minutes, which is perfect. Uh, widescreen. And it looks like this is done from uh, Uncorked uh, Entertainment, who released it. Yeah, Uncorked on the, on the side here. And it's uh, 2016. Um, and let's see if I can get this. It's written and directed by Ryan. And here's, here's one of these, these names. Bell Car Cardot. Car no, not, no, no, I'm going to try that again. 
Ryan Bell, I can't tell if that's a G, Guard to Garta, Bell, Bell Garta, Ryan Bell Garta. Sorry, sorry, Ryan. The writing is really small. I can't tell if that's a G or a C, but, um, but Ryan uh, directed it. So we'll, we'll say it that way. Um, nobody else looks familiar as far as the cast and crew goes. Um, let's see, what does the inside look like? Um, okay, this is kind of... Ooh. Gremlin wants to get away from me, wants to get out of the box. Yeah, it's just the... Just the front, so kind of, kind of boring. But it is a, um, a, a decent... A decent cover, though. I can't really tell what the gremlin is trying to get out of, though. I thought maybe it might be like a jack-in-a-box, but can't really tell. But it's a decent-looking cover. It's got some good, some good colors on it. So, um, okay. So next one. This I have never heard of, and it just looks crazy. So I had to pick it up. It's called Voodoo Apocalypse. And that's the cover. Looking very, uh, you know, kind of like 1970s. It's got that kind of like, uh, I don't know, uh, exploitative cover on there. Um, obviously, I'm guessing it's a zombie movie because there are hands popping up out of the ground. But it's a good looking cover. I like that cover. Um, I haven't heard of anybody in the cast on the front. There's its side. And let's see what we got on the back here. It's from Echo Bridge. It's not saying any special features. Um, it is widescreen, 95 minutes, not rated. Uh, what does it say? Um, White Chocolate is a rookie police officer assigned to hunt down famous drug trafficker Jimmy Vanilla. Uh, Charlie Vegas, oh, Charlie Vargas, um, an officer whose partner was killed by Vanilla. Uh, together, the two team up on a wild journey to apprehend the drug trafficker that takes them through a world of black magic, Mexican wrestling, kung fu, enhanced swords and songs that turn listeners into zombies. So, and it's directed by uh, Vash, 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 Vashni, Vashni, Vash, Vash and I, Ra uh, J, Ramos. I, I know I mangled that. Um, 2018. Here's the back. A lot of action on that back. So this looks fun. Oh, and I'm not sure if I showed you the, here's the, the back of Gremlin. Don't think I showed that. Um, let's take a look at the inside. Yeah, it's just the, the DVD. Just, I mean, the, uh, the cover on the front. But that's okay. I mean, it, it's a decent picture. So it's, you know, that's not too bad. At least they got it centered. So that's, that's Voodoo Apocalypse. And this one I do want to see. This looks entertaining. It looks fun. Um, I did not see anybody that looks... Man, some of these names, I just, just are really hard for me. Um... But uh, yeah, not, I don't recognize anybody else. But it looks fun. Uh, next one, <clears throat> uh, sci-fi film with one of the greats. Um, it is called uh, Cartel 2045 and stars Sir Danny Trejo. Had to pick this up just because he's in it. Um, I like the big robot standing behind him. Try to get that into, out of the light. There we go. The robot looks cool. And it says, 
a perfectly enjoyable old school sci-fi action romp. And that is from Ben Bussey at Warp. So one word here. So let's see. Warpedperspective.com. It's also tiny. Um, a new breed of drug war. Here's the, the side. And let's see, um, some of the reviews are a stunning ensemble cast and superb villain played by master, uh, master Danny Trejo. And that is from DK Magazine. Oh, another review from DK Magazine. I'll have to remember them for my own stuff. Um, this is totally worth a watch, dot, dot, dot. Very reminiscent of Planet Terror. Uh, which is the you know Robert Rodriguez film that was uh, part of the the Grindhouse double feature with Tarantino with Death Proof with his film a very underrated movie both of those films very underrated as as a whole it's it's all it's all underrated uh, Emerald Gore Society gave that uh, let's see it's the year uh, twenty forty five. The drug, the war on drugs in Mexico has escalated as drug cartels use robots to enforce their operations. A Marine goes to um, Javier in search for his brother's killer, Danny Trejo, who leads the robot cartel. And it's directed by Chris Lee. And I don't, you know, I don't recognize anybody else. It's like Chris Lee is one of the writers. It's for, uh, all, another one from Uncorked. Yeah. And let's see here. It's 106 minutes. Oh, wow. So this one's a little bit longer, widescreen. Here's the back. So the robot thing looks kind of cool. Look up on here. Yeah, up on top right there. Uh, there we go. That looks kind of cool. This one's, you know, they did a little different thing here. They put uh, Danny Trejo and the robot next to one another and then the title. So at least that's a little different. It's not too bad. This could be fun. Uh, next one is called Crying Wolf, and um, obviously it's a it's a werewolf movie. And let's see, it says funny, gory, sexy, and above all, massively entertaining throughout. This is from Beyond the Gore. Um, its tagline: uh, When the howling starts. The Killing Begins. I do like that front. <coughs> Excuse me. I do like that front. It's a nice looking cover. Stands out. The red really works. Got to have a good cover. I mean, that, that's very important, especially colors and things. Um, you know, they got to stand out. Certain colors catch your eye. Um, the font is good, too. I like that. Uh, let's see the back here. Uh, let's see, we got a review. One of the most memorable, memorable films. One of the most memorable independent movies, uh, and that's from Vile Reviews. Um, that's the only one. Bonus features are making of videos, so plural, deleted scenes, and music videos, plural. So, telling us that there's more than one video for making of and more than one music video so that's cool and of course deleted deleted scenes um so let's see it's uh what does it say about the movie uh there are a lot of strange and weird goings on in the little village of diddington dead diddington i think that's correct for centuries, a pack of werewolves have resided in the sleepy town, but when local girl Charlotte meets a particularly gruesome death, 
The town is descended upon by reporters, crazy detectives, and lunatic hunters, desperate to get their story, solve the crime, and kill the beasts. Ah, so there's more than one. But these wolves are smart. Very smart. And this is also yep, uncorked. Side. Um, doesn't mean that's the company who made it. It's just the company that's distributing it. So it looks like maybe Dollar Tree made a deal with, with uncorked entertainment because almost everything here is uncorked so far. Um, try to read the director's name. It's, it's kind of blocked. Uh, Tony, and unfortunately I can't tell if that's an O or a U. This stuff is so tiny. Uh, Joppa, Tony Jopa. Hard to tell, I'm sorry. Um, oh, Ka Caroline Monroe? Caroline Monroe, really? Okay. So as they didn't put her name on the front, unless this isn't the same person. But uh, all horror fans know who Caroline Monroe is. Caroline Monroe is um or moro oh maybe that's it maybe it is okay caroline moro that's where i'm getting it wrong it's very small i mean this print is really tiny so it might not be the same person i'm thinking it is maybe that's why she's not listed on the front because you would think that she would be but um uh she's the if this is she's the actress that was in maniac um the last horror show um she was in want to say slaughter high i think it was slaughter high um i mean star crash um you know one of the greatest star wars ripoffs some people say the film was made before star wars and and uh, lucas ripped off star crash um so the, it may or may not be her it's hard to tell because it's so tiny um but uh, if it is her, her name should be on the front. If it's not her, then okay. Um, and there's nobody else here that I recognize. Uh, 2015. And we'll take a look inside. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, Uncorked is just doing standard, standard stuff with these. I mean, it's still fine. I mean, the, uh, uh, the framing of where the wolf is on the disc is good. You know, they have the hands come out you know the head right on top there so then you got the hole right in the center so yeah the, it looks good even though it's it's not very original but it, it's the the placement of it is good okay now the next one is the one that i had talked about with the director that's going to come on to one filmmaker one film um there's two of these films um i love both of these and um, this is the first one. It's called uh, The Redwood Massacre. And um, I like, you know, both films very much. I do enjoy its sequel, um, Redwood Massacre Annihilation, um, a little better. Um, that one has Danielle Harris in it. And, um, but I, I really enjoy both of these. For a while, this was difficult to find um, anywhere. Like, like it was out of print. Um, it cost a lot, um, like through Amazon, and uh, it was very frustrating because I bought the second one, and then I had to watch the first one, uh, I think on Tubi maybe, and um, I eventually found it at Zia Records uh, for a decent price, and I bought it, and now that's being sold at Dollar Tree. Um, so if you find this, definitely pick it up. Um, it's, it's quite good. I really enjoy it, and then if you like it, pick up its sequel. Um, so it's got a review here on the front, um, that says, uh, we'll, um, we'll have you hooked from the very first minute to the very last, uh, that is from a uh, UK horror scene. And, um, that's correct. I, I would agree with that. I don't really think this is a good representation of where the film takes place at. It doesn't really take place at a, at a, at a house. It's more at a, um, almost kind of like a uh, uh like an abandoned factory um uh, but that's fine you, you know it's okay 
Um, and then on the back, it's got uh, it's got some laurels because it, it obviously went to some festivals. There's the killer. So here's the back. There's the killer right there. That guy. And it's, and it's a pretty cool looking killer. Um, some of the reviews are Gore Hounds Will Love It. That's from Ain't It Cool News. Slasher Film of the Year, Horror Society. Um, its special features are Making a Video and um, 5.1 Surround Sound. Uh, the director on this, um, who I have talked to, we actually talked about both of these films, um, is uh, uh, David Ryan Keefe. Uh, this was made in uh, 2014. Once again, uncorked. Yeah, so they 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 must have bought a whole bunch of films from uh, uncorked. Um, so the story is: each year on the exact date of the infamous Redwood House massacre, people from around the country come to check out the legendary murder site. Events take a bloody turn when the Innocent campers discover the Redwood legend is, in fact, a horrible, bloody, bloody reality, turning the unexpecting victims into prey for a mysterious axe-wielding maniac that has remained dormant for 20 years. Um, so let's... Yeah, same thing. They're... they're they're sparing no expense on on creativity on these on these DVDs. So just the same thing as the front, and this one is a, is a little annoying because the hole is right in his like where his mouth would be. So I mean I, I don't know, I guess if you think of the hole as his mouth, but um, yeah I don't I don't like that they just knocked his his mouth off there. But I don't know. What are you gonna do? But still great movie. Definitely check this one out. Highly recommend it. Um, I don't know if I showed it. All right. So then the next one is called Monstrous. And um, this one, is, it's a Bigfoot movie. And when I posted the picture online, uh, one of my Facebook friends said that it's a, it's like a good, different type of Bigfoot movie. So that, that made me interested. Um, and covers okay, I guess. I mean, it, it shows what the Bigfoot monster would look like, I guess. Maybe it does look like that. Maybe it doesn't. Um, I don't recognize anybody who's in it. Something is out there. I do like the, the broken down car that's there. You can tell that it has like one headlight, so... Must have maybe like hit a deer or something, or maybe it hit Bigfoot. I don't know. I haven't watched it. So not the not the worst cover. It's okay. It's fine. And then once again, oh, uncorked. There's uncorked right there. Yeah, they, they, wow, these are all gonna be uncorked, I guess. There's the side. Okay, so then on the back, um, by the time you see it, you're already dead. Uh, bonus feature, audio commentary. Okay, I can live with that. Just one one bonus feature and audio commentary is fine. Um, let's see, it's not rated and it's widescreen, 87 minutes. That's fine. Um, made in 2019. Well, at least it came out in 2019. Um, and the director is Bruce... Wimpel, written by Anna Shields. So that's rare when you when you actually see like a uh, like a female screenwriter. So that's good, and it's good that she's writing a horror film. That's nice. Um, let's see. A young woman goes searching for answers after her friend mysteriously vanishes vanishes in Whitehall, New York, and. Oh, and Ab and Ab Ryan Dak Town at at Iron Dak Town and Iron Dak Town. 
It's capitalized. An Iron Dak town. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Probably not, but a town known for its Bigfoot sightings. She quickly learns that hiding in the woods is an evil more sinister than she could even imagine. So, and then here's the, the back. I do like the, uh, the Bigfoot screaming up there. And uh, everybody's got like, like, a, like a pained look on their face. Like they, they found the pictures that they could of them just like either looking scared or they're in pain or <laughs> it's kind of funny. And uh, yeah, I, I, like the, I like the picture of the, of the Bigfoot up there. Let's take a look inside. So let, let's see. Will it just be this part right here? And then the whole of the DVD is going to be like right there, but the names won't be there. So say monstrous Bigfoot with the hole like right in the center. So let's see. Oh, okay. Well, well, kind of. Okay, I was almost right. So they use the same picture of yeah of, of, of Bigfoot from the front, but the font for monstrous is different. So they had that. So it's just the picture of a Bigfoot and then they used a different uh, font for Monstrous, which I like. I like that they did that. And then it has all the companies right there. So it's a little different. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one is called Derailed. Um, this is one that I've actually wanted to see for a while. Um, I'm pretty sure this one is up on Tubi and I was going to watch it on there. Just trying to get it out of the damn light. I should kind of get the point, but uh, I like the cover. And I like the, I always like one title names, so derailed. Um, it shows a, uh, you could see it because of the light. There's a, a train car that is uh, crashed in what looks like maybe a lake or the ocean. And down here, in the corner right there is like a little gill man or humanoid from the deep or some some creature that's swimming around them and um if i remember correctly yeah this is they're they're trapped in this car and then this creature is trying to get in to attack them um apparently the creature wanted to attack me um so let's see it says uh, stay inside and die. Go outside and fight for your life. Um, there's a laurel right there. So it did win um, an award back in, looks like, 2018. I do like this cover. There we go. Now, now you can see it. Then here's the side. And it's, yeah, it's, it's more uncorked. Um, extra behind the scenes featurette. Um, oh, and it gives a whole bunch of other laurels there on the back, right along there. So it, it's won a few awards. Uh, it says on top here, full scream ahead. See, because it's, it's a train. Um, and it's directed by Dale... Fab Rigar. Fabrigar? Dale Fabrigar. Once again, sorry. Sorry if it's wrong. Oh, Lance Hendrickson is in it. Why is that his name or picture somewhere on this? That's definitely Lance Hendrickson. Hmm. Carter Scott got an and credit, but I don't know who that is. Uh, let's see, it's not rated. And it's widescreen, 81 minutes, good time. Uh, let's see, what is this about? A woman boards a, mist a, a woman boards a murder mystery train that derails. She, along with other surviving passengers, find themselves trapped within the sinking wreckage. They discover what lies beneath the surface is far more terrifying 
as they fight to stay alive against a deadly predator determined to kill them one by one. Okay. And you got, so it, it's, that's the inside. So they moved the title of the movie down below the creature because there's the creature right there. And there's the train car that's derailed. And then all the company logos are right there. So they got all the important stuff in there. Okay, this is one that I definitely want to watch. Been looking forward to this one. I was excited when I saw this in the pile. Uh, uh, next is one, never heard of this. Um, it's The Witch in the Window. A New Start, An Old Spirit. That's the cover of it there. It's not bad. I think I probably, if possible, would have removed these. See these kind of like, she's in a square. So it would have been nice if she was just kind of floating above the house and, and remove this as kind of blended in a little bit. So, but it's okay. And there's the, the side. And I can, and I can already tell by me just turning it. It's also, yep, yeah, uncorked. Um, let's see, back. Haunting and Sublime. That's from uh, Sci-Fi Now. Bonus features, director's commentary. Okay, good. Uh, one of the most beautifully crafted horror films to hit the screen. Uh, this is from Movies and Focus. Well, I will be the judge of that when I watch it. How dare he tell me how to feel? Um, not rated. Widescreen. 77 minutes. There we go. And the director is Andy Mitten, Mitton, Mitton, Andy Mitton. Um, don't recognize anybody else. So the story, uh, when Simon brings his 12 year old son, Finn, to rural Vermont to help flip an old farmhouse, they encounter the uh, mischievous spirit of Lydia, a previous owner. And now with every repair they make, she gets stronger. Okay. There's the back. All right, so let's see. Same thing. And yeah, they just took the front. This wouldn't be bad if they just got rid of those, you know, that box around her. Be a little creepier. Uh, this looks like 2018. All right. Next one is. Crossbreed, This Is War. Um, it stars uh, uh, Vivica A. Fox and Daniel Baldwin. Definitely know who they are. Not too sure about that cover. Yeah, kind of looks like it was thrown together using just like Photoshop or something. Um, Crossbreed, this is war. Uh, what's the review here? Uh, innovative sci-fi that impossible that's impossible not to enjoy. And that's hiddenremote.com. Let's grab some water here. Got my wildlife mug. Yeah, it just looks, I don't know, it just kind of looks cheesy. It looks kind of 
90s. As a side. Oh, and it's yep, still uncorked. Uh, another review um, Expendables meets Alien. That's from Train Wrecked Society. An entertaining sci fi epic with plenty of action to go around. That's a uh, indie horror online. Bonus features deleted scenes and outtakes. Um, it's from 2018. 86 minutes widescreen and oh okay i i actually know the people who made this and i did not realize that so um the director who's also one of the writers is um brandon um Sag uh, uh, sagal 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 i think it's how you say his name sorry brandon um, but I'm, I'm friends with him on Facebook and I've, and I've had a conversation with him um, about another film that he did called The Dawn. Um, so I would like to have him on uh, One Filmmaker, One Film to discuss The Dawn. Um, it's produced by uh, Devaney Penn, uh, who I also like. So Slagle. Brandon Slagle. I don't know why I couldn't pronounce that before, but it just came to me. Brandon Slagle um watch the other way was correct and now i'm getting it wrong uh but yeah so it stars somebody called sink fisher i don't know who that is daniel baldwin vivica a fox uh devany pin uh, vernon wells vernon wells as murphy so he's in this too Oh, shit, I'll definitely have to check this out. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's find out what this thing is all about. In the near future, the President of the United States hires a team of military uh, veterans to retrieve an alien bioweapon from a top-secret research facility orbiting the Earth. These highly trained mercenaries must infiltrate the space station and recover the deadly experimental alien cargo located on board. All is going according to plan until the cargo escapes. Which I'm assuming is, is this right here. I'm assuming that is the cargo right there. Yeah, man, I wish that they would have given this a, a better cover. Back looks okay. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, Brandon Slagle also uh, directed for the Mahal Brothers out here in Vegas, um, Attack of the Unknown, I believe, uh, which is a, a, a Blu-ray that I reviewed a little while ago. Okay, so that's, that's on the list because of, of who made it. All right, next one. Almost done. Uh, next one is called Anger of the Dead. Um, another film I have not heard of, um, obviously it looks like a zombie movie. Survival is all that is left. It has a very Walking Dead type of cover on it. Even the, the color scheme is Walking Dead. Um, I would even say the font is Walking Dead. So they, they definitely know what audience they were going for with this one. But it's a good cover. It's, a, it's actually a nice cover. I like all the zombies and all that stuff coming towards them. Um, still uncorked. Who's this? Um, so let's see. Gripping Splatter and Surprising Evil. That is from Bubba Zeniti. I think I got that right. Uh, special features are making a featurette, bloopers, a slideshow, Storyboard to screen. Uh, 84 minutes widescreen. And the director is, it looks like, Francisco. Pick one. Like Picone? Picone, probably. 
so yeah so like like francisco picon um and yeah no one looks familiar oh 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 okay this just went up a notch this just went up a notch produced by uni yui bowl yui bowl produced this film that's that right there that for me just brings it up a notch even if i mispronounced his name uh um Yui Bull is one of my favorite producers, directors. I don't care how much shit he gets. I don't care if people want to call him Ed Wood. I, I don't care if people love or hate his movies. I love this guy. House of the Dead is one of my favorite zombie movies. Um, he has done a ton of movies. And uh, Blood Rain, I own all three Blood Rains. I have both House of the Dead um, he also did the uh, In the Name of the King series. Um, he's done a lot of like uh, video game adaptions uh, to film. And uh, people don't like him. They don't like him at all. Um, he kind of comes off insane a little bit. He used to be a boxer. And um, he, there's a whole documentary about him uh, boxing his critics. Um, I, I, I love the guy. I, so th this, this just went up. It just went up. So, um, and it was made in 2015, so not too, too long ago. So all that excitement made me, made my throat dry. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about this. So let's see the inside. I bet it's just going to be that. So let's see. Oh, hey, look, I was, I was right. <laughs> Excuse me. I was absolutely right. I got that hole right, right in his belly. All right. Moving on. This is one I've wanted to buy for a long time. Um, I own a lot of Christmas like uh, uh, horror films. And the reviews for this have been awful. I saw the, uh, you know, some like, like the trailer for it. And I've seen some like video reviews and stuff for it. Um, and the CG looks horrible. The visual effects just look horrible um of the creature so the film is and and as i'm sure a lot of you know this i i own a lot of these movies um this is krampus the reckoning it's one i've wanted to pick up but i could only find it on like amazon and stuff not at a good price just too expensive for for something i know that's not going to be very good but i own i think including Krampus, like one of the greatest Christmas horror movies ever made, the, you know, the big budget film. I, I think I have uh, about two, three, four, yeah, probably like four other Krampus movies. This may now make five. So I do have a Krampus collection. Um, so I figured this has to be in it, but just the, the visual effect, that CGI of, of, of the Krampus, it just does not look good from what I saw. So I avoided it. I didn't want to pay too much, but now I only paid a dollar. So that's not too bad um it's uh he knows when you've been naughty well that's true so, so does santa um but it's, it's not a bad cover that's actually a pretty good cover it's got those kind of muted christmas colors going so it's not very it's not very bright but it uh it does have the christmas colors so it's got a good cover and i think this is pretty much correct of what the that the krampus looks like from what i've seen um, here's the side still uncorked. I can see it just from looking at the screen. Um, let's see, you better be good. That's what it says on the back, uh, special features, making a video audio commentary for this. All right. So I am, I am excited about that. Uh, 2015, 88 minutes widescreen um let's see if i recognize anybody here written and directed by robert conway there's a name i can pronounce um looks like robert conway did a fair amount of work on this producer story um owen conway is on here a lot too so it must have been music by owen conway it must have been a whole conway family project 
Um, let's see, what is the story then? Uh, Zoe is a strange little girl with a not so imaginary friend, the Krampus, who is the dark companion of kindly old Saint Nicholas. Uh, the Krampus has been unleashed upon a small town and the legendary demon will seek out all the naughty people to punish them at Christmas time. No one is safe as the Krampus hunts them down tortures them, and drags their helpless souls into the depths of hell. Okay. And there's the, the back. So maybe I'm wrong. I mean, there, there's a picture of the, the Krampus right there. Um, so maybe, maybe it'll be decent. I mean, the back of the box looks okay. I like the blood running down. That looks good. Um, so who knows? Maybe it'll be okay. Um, I'll probably do more towards Christmas than a, a whole video just on the Krampus movies I own, because uh, probably more will come out. Let's see, what does the... Yeah, that's more or less the cover. They just move the, the titles up. All right, and then our last one. We thought we did it. We did it. We're on the last one. The last one is called uh, Coven, and or Coven, probably uh, Coven, not Coven, probably Coven, um, and it says uh, practicing their craft, killing their prey. Ah, uh, we know what movie this is uh, trying to be. Practicing their craft. I've got this here. And it's not a bad cover, actually. I like the colors. My eye was drawn to it. That's the important thing. And I want, and I picked it up. Like the guy with the, the wings. Those, those look good. Here's the side. And let's see. Uh, beauty is pain. Well, I should know. Uh, let's see here. It is not rated. All of these have been uncorked. Um, unrated, widescreen, 81 minutes, always a good time, made in 2019. Um, and wow, I'm not even going to try and, and pronounce the director's name. This says like every letter in the alphabet in it. First name is Marguerite. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pronounce this. <laughs> try even by not even going to bother trying. Uh, let's see if there's anybody who I recognize in the cast. Uh, the answer to that is no. I do not recognize anybody in the crew. Nope. All right. So let's find out what it's about. Five undergrad witches come together in order to perform a ritual to invoke the ancient powers of the witch Azra. Azra, the leader of the coven, gets carried away and accidentally kills. Oh, okay. Let me say that better. The leader of the coven gets, or co coven, yeah, the leader of the coven gets carried away and accidentally kills one of the witches during the during the ritual. She needs the strength of a complete coven. Coven. See that? I keep going back. I think my problem with this is. If you remember a long time ago, that, that film, uh, American Movie, and uh, I think it's Mike, it's the director? No, Mike might be the friend. I'm blanking on who the director is. But he has a film that's spelt exactly the same way. And there's that fight over Coven or Coven, because he's got that little symbol over the O, I think it is. And uh, uh, the director and one of the actors go back and forth of what it's actually called. So I think since that film, I've, I've, I've gone between calling it Coven and Coven. But I, I think in this case, it is, it is Coven. Um, so let's see. As, um, okay, so out to find the final witch. As she absorbs the power of the surviving girls, plot to take her down, but the possessed witch unleashes hell on campus with only one young witch left to stop her. That doesn't sound too bad. Check, yeah. 
Hmm. Not sure if I showed that. And then the inside. Oh man. So this one is just funny. So it's just the front, but they put the circle right in the guy's head. He has no head. Like they couldn't move it up or down. Wow. Okay. It's kind of funny, actually. Maybe I like it. Huh. All right. So that is all 12 that we went through. Thank you for sitting through my, <laughs> my mispronunciations of things. So let's do a, a, a quick recap of what I got. And then I'll sign off, as I'm sure you have important things to do. So first, we got uh, to go backwards. We got uh, Coven. Knock over other videos here. Um, then we got uh, Krampus, The Reckoning. We got Anger of the Dead. I guess they could be angry. I mean, they're dead. They're. I mean, I'm, I guess they're angry. Anger of the Dead. Yeah, I guess they could be. Um, then we got uh, Crossbreed, This is War. Not sure if that's part of the title because on the side it just says Crossbreed, but Crossbreed, This is War. Uh, the Witch in the Window. Derailed. Monstrous. The Redwood Massacre, which once again, I highly recommend. Parts one and two. Crying Wolf. Cartel 2045. Now, you know, this is right around the corner. So, you know, we aren't too far away from, from 2045. So this might be telling us what, the, what our future is. So maybe a good movie for all of us to watch. Uh, Voodoo Apocalypse. And we started with Gremlin, one Gremlin. All right, so that's it. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, thank you for being patient. <laughs> and um, yeah, so part two of this, uh, we got 11 videos or DVDs to go through on part two. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll look at those uh, on Friday. So uh, thank you once again. And uh, once again, um, I posted a, about an Easter egg. It's growing. This is a project that I'm, I'm working on. So it's getting larger. And uh, you can probably see that right here, it says the ring. So that's, I'm working on a, working on a pretty big, big video that deals with three films. So look forward to that. Um, that'll be coming up soon. But uh, all right, thank you very much. And um, I appreciate you being here and I will talk to you on part two. Bye. Hey everybody. Thanks for hanging out after the video. And uh, thank you for watching the very first Dark Park Films sponsored video. And who is that sponsor? Well, I've now learned if I do this with my hands, they go to the right area. There we go. That would be Wildlife Command Center Coffee, and you can purchase it right there. You can go to their website, which is uh, buywcc.com, and pick up their coffee. Uh, they have uh, two blends, which I'm going to show you now. Um, the first coffee is this one right here. Uh, this is a breakfast blend. It's 10 ounces, and it is a medium ground. Um, and it does say, and it's breakfast, like I said, and this is what it says right here. It says, uh, early bird can catch the worm. 
So there you go, a breakfast blend coffee that helps you catch the worm in the morning. And um, I really like this one. I'm more of a, a, a breakfast kind of blend coffee guy in the morning. Um, so this one I, I really like. Um, it has that little bit of oomph to it to kind of get you moving, uh, you know, get you up and out. And uh, so I really enjoy this one. But that doesn't mean that I don't like the other one, which is this one right here. Uh, this is a dark roast. It is also 10 ounces. And both of these are $7.99 at their website. Pretty good price for 10 ounces worth of ground coffee. Um, this one is, um, it's a little darker. So it's, you know, I think it's better for drinking at night. Maybe if you're, you know, writing a screenplay or if you're filming, uh, this has got that oomph oomph, that double punch to, to get you going. So, um, this is one that I also recommend. I like both of these quite a bit, uh, but I'm, I kind of do, you know, the breakfast in the morning and then the dark more at night. Um, so I recommend both of these quite a bit. And um, how did I find out about these two, you know, uh, these two coffees here? And how did I find out about uh, Wildlife uh, Command Center? Well, when I was working um, on uh, Night of the Zom Ghouls, there was a box of coffee that was just sitting there filled with coffee. And we didn't know what to do with it. Like, whose is this? Who brought it? Why, why is it here? And so we just kept going to the store and buying coffee. And then one day I said, why don't we just get the coffee out of the box and use that instead of, you know, wasting money on going to Smith's or whatever and, and picking up coffee. So we did. Uh, we did not realize that it was um, the Wildlife Command Center coffee and uh, that it, you know, was sponsoring the movie. And it was great coffee. Everybody loved it. And we just went right through it. By the last day of filming, this coffee was gone. And uh, I went and found out, you know, about Wildlife Command Center, asked if they would like to be a sponsor for Dark Park Films, you know, for their coffee. Um, as many of you know, I love coffee. I love coffee mugs. And so this was a perfect match. And Wildlife Command Center is great with animals. So they provide a great service for rescuing animals. So it's kind of that double whammy for me where coffee, helping animals, you can't go wrong. And they were even cool enough to send me, get in there, a coffee mug because they knew that I liked coffee mugs. And right now, I don't get that. Oh, 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 oh. They don't want to go on the keyboard. But there's their, that's their uh, dark blend because I'm recording this at night. So I am, I am actually drinking that while recording. Um, also, one thing that you can get at their website, which is cool, is you can get this. There you go. This pocket knife, uh, which is $9.49. And um, this is pretty cool because it has their name on it. Uh, you know, Wildlife Command Center. We can catch it. And this is what it looks like. Put that down there. There we go. Fully, fully out. So you're getting like the bottle opener. You got the corkscrew. You got a screwdriver. You got a blade. And then you got this little hook thing that you can pop it into something that doesn't have a tab. And then, um, you know, the liquid or whatever in there will come out. So this is pretty cool. And um, I'm just going to keep mine in my car because you never know. You might need a pocket knife. So um, please support them. I'm going to have links down below, uh, you know, where you can, you know, check out just the uh, Wildlife Command Center. Um, I'll also have a link for Wildlife Command Center coffee. And uh, it will basically be for uh, both these guys right here. And uh, please support them. Um, I support them. I think what they do is pretty awesome. And, um, you know, maybe this coffee will, will be on your set or in your kitchen. It will definitely be, you know, on my set in my kitchen. I know that. So uh, please, once again, I'm going to show you these. Please go to their, their website and uh, pick up their coffee and make it, uh, make it part of your day or night, depending on which one you, which one you like. So uh, that'll be about it. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, yeah, so thank you. And uh, once again, 
please, uh, please support uh, my channel. Please support uh, the Wildlife Command Center. And I will catch you later. Bye.